Welcome to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today is Monday of the fifth week of Lent, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valier. Alexio Divina is from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our gospel passage. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. All glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of the Olives, but early in the morning, he arrived again in the temple area. And all the people started coming to him and sat down and he taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go. And from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. All praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel reading according to St. John, the scene takes place on the Mount of Olives just outside the walls of Jerusalem. It is the only mention of this area in the Gospels apart from the accounts of the agony in the garden. Yet it is likely that Jesus and his disciples would have gone there from time to time to pray. There is no question that the woman was guilty as charged. In our day, of course, we might like to ask, what happened to the man? (laughs) It takes two to commit adultery, right? Unless it is in the secrecy of the mind. And which of them was the married partner? Was it the man or the woman or both? Or was it the man only? Hmm. But in a society which was very concerned about legitimacy and the continuation of the family line, the burden of integrity was on the wife. Extramarital affairs of the husband were taken far less seriously. Any children arising out of such a liaison were the woman's problem. It did not affect the purity of the family line. How fortunate for the man. Hmm. What is also highly distasteful in this scene is that the woman is dragged in by the scribes and Pharisees and drawn in as a pawn in a game they were playing with Jesus. There are a number of such 
suspect plants in the gospel stories. The law says that this woman should be condemned to death by stoning. What is your opinion, they say to Jesus? It is a little like the question about paying taxes to Caesar. Whatever Jesus is likely to say, he will convict himself out of his own mouth, at least they think that he will. In fact, the law specified death but not the manner of execution for adulterers. However, the book of Deuteronomy prescribes stoning for a betrothed virgin caught in adultery. It was also the prerogative of witnesses to the adultery to throw the first stones, hence Jesus' invitation to his accusers. If Jesus says, she should be forgiven, then he is in violation of the law, according to them. And if she says, or Jesus says, that she should be punished, then he contradicts his own teaching about mercy and compassion for the sinner. And so that's the wish of these Pharisees and scholars. However, Jesus cleverly throws the ball back in their own court. If there is one of you who has not sinned, let him be the first to throw the stone at her. In a strange show of humility, they do not reply. They are reduced to silence. And so, as a second time, Jesus bends down and writes on the ground, one by one, and beginning with the eldest, they go away. Eventually, Jesus and the woman are left alone. It's no embarrassment to Jesus to be alone in the presence of a convicted adulterer. Jesus spent much time in front of many sinners, tax collectors, prostitutes, etc., and so Jesus says to her, has no one condemned you? And the poor woman looks at Jesus and says, no one, sir. And Jesus, with his eyes full of mercy, and we can just picture that gaze of mercy to this woman. Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go away and do not sin anymore. Does this mean that Jesus condones adultery? Of course not. But he sees in the woman the seeds of repentance and the potential for conversion. And besides, Jesus is God. He is merciful. As the scriptures tell us, his mercy endures forever. Jesus looks always at the present and the future, and never at our past. Looking at this story, we can first look forward with confidence to the same compassion from Jesus for our own sinfulness. But we also need to have the honesty of the Pharisees who did not dare punish the woman because they acknowledged that they too were sinners. How often have we unhesitatingly sat in judgment on someone for wrongs they have done with never a thought of our own culpability, sort of picking specks out of other people's eyes while there are planks that are stuck in our own. Something for all of us to ponder as Lent continues. After our closing prayer, we read the scripture passage and contemplate its message again. Concentrate on a thought that comes to you either through a verse or even just a small word that touches you and ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you and how you may spiritually grow closer to Him in friendship. Let us complete a divine reading now with a closing prayer and let us pray. Having contemplated your divine word and embraced the sacred truths you teach us, Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy. For even now as we walk amid passing things, 
You teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus be upon you always and in all ways. And may his generous blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, if you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, and if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button and help support this channel. And also, pass along the links to your friends and relatives as well. God bless you all, and have a great day.